Welcome everyone to What the Force. I'm Marie Claire Gould, and with me today is Chelsea, i.e. <laughs> Corsica. My good friend who did the reverse Anadala episode with me. Welcome, Chelsea. Good to be on. You're well you're welcome back anytime. The door is always open. The audio link is always on. Yes. yes. Okay, good. Yes. Well, no, anytime we have a really cool topic. And today we have a very cool topic, which on surface, I was like, this isn't going to be a thing. And then we were both <laughs> very surprised it was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> which just kind of goes to prove that, you know, Star Wars is one story. Um, we're going to be talking about Vader Immortal, at least the first two chapters. Yes, Vader Immortal. You didn't think it was going to be a thing? I don't know. I... I was like, oh, cool, they're making another video game. But the video games have become incredibly interesting recently. You never you never played the story mode of um, Battlefront 2. That was incredibly connected to Star Wars's larger structure. I think you'd find it really interesting. I probably would, but where, where would I have the time? <laughs> I'm, I'm planning on trying to play... Uh, Jedi Fallen Order because the symbolism itself is like <laughs> is like okay so what if the angels lost the holy war between heaven and hell oh yeah and to me that's fascinating <laughs> plus, plus second sister's hot so. oh I mean yes and Cal, <laughs> Cal's and Cal. baby oh I love and him. yes oh did you notice did you notice in the trailer that just came out they had that like the ninth sister or something yeah and yeah 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 it was like wow they're really it, charles Scholl's vader run is really important still yeah, so it is important hmm. all of this is interconnected what i know hmm weird so we're gonna talk about vader immortal which is the uh the vr game it's a canon virtual reality video game for the Oculus Quest. I actually don't know anything about virtual reality, so yeah, I don't know what the I don't know what the like uh, platforms are. But and, it was made. And VR makes me um, have headaches, so I probably will never have an opportunity to actually play this. Oh, game. that's that's too bad. Um, I've it's I've too- I've done VR twice, and both times I had a migraine after. So I. I suspect that VR is never going to be my thing. I'm very happy, though, that there are people who do walkthroughs who actually can give us an opportunity to be able to see the storytelling in in its base form. Um, although I tend to yell at YouTube videos to turn to the left a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or right. I'm like, please just turn to the right. I just need to see that statue that you refuse to look at. <laughs> I know. This is important. <laughs> these details um it, it's it's kind of frustrating because there was another vr experience that they made with like a whole building called the uh, secrets of the empire mm-hmm. um it, it was like it's they made two locations for it and i think you can still go to it, it, it in orlando and anaheim and it's a game where you play as rebel operatives infiltrating a facility on mustafar while you're dressed as stormtroopers and what they they have huh. you do what they have you do is you go into an actual building that you can walk around in the same way that the 3D world is. And like you have like heat vents and stuff that make you think it's lava and 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 like other interactive experience stuff like that. So And that was written sounds- by David S. Goyer, who also wrote Vader Immortal. So there's going to be tie-ins. Um, there's actually one tie-in that we know from um, Secrets of the Empire, the lightsaber, etc., that you find in both is very similar. Well, apparently when you, apparently I'm not sure because I haven't played Secrets of the Empire because it's impossible unless you're in Anaheim or Orlando. <laughs> but it, apparently as you're flying over at the very beginning of Vader Immortal, you look down and you see the exact place where you go as a stormtrooper. So it's like, it is actually really connected. I wonder if they're actually on the same timeline because uh, Vader Immortal takes place a couple of years before Rogue One. Oh, yeah. I hope. So, but after the Vader comic. But after the Vader comic. Years after the Vader comic. Oh, really? Yeah. When does the Vader comic take place? So, the Charles Soule uh, run of uh, Vader is 
right from the moment that oh, Vader becomes right. Vader. He starts the the first thing is literally you see through his eyes. Uh, so it, it starts right away, and he has to go and find a lightsaber. He has to go and bleed his crystal. He's he's a he's a baby Sith. Um, <laughs> He's just a child. <laughs> and and Charles Sewell has come out recently and said when he was writing the script, he was given, you know, lots of information about Vader and Mortal to be able to tie the two together. Yeah, I, I know I really also that. Fortress Vader ties into this as well. So if you're also interested in kind of more information kind of around this whole concept, also Kevin Scott's Fortress Vader also ties in. I have actually not read that. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Maybe I have a thing. Uh, <laughs> essentially, and and like when I interviewed Kevin Scott, he said that he feels like Vader is not just sitting around waiting for death. He is planning and he is trying to figure out how to kind of overtake the emperor on his own. He has lots of interesting things in his fortress himself. He's also a collector. Perhaps he is not quite as, mm, he's not as much of a planner as Palpatine is, Um, but he is trying. I mean, it's good good for him, but he unfortunately is a dead boy. He's not very good. He is a ghost. (laughs) So, yes. So he's not really going to be able to accomplish much unless, until his son returns to him and gives him the the connection to Padme back. So, which we we learn that that's the key in the Vader Charles Soul Vader run. Exactly, it yeah. was very clear, very very clear. Um, so Vader Immortal, like I don't know why I didn't think anything of this because I knew when we heard this announced, oh, everything is connected. I knew that like in my soul. But I wanted to talk a little bit about ring theory with relation to Star Wars and why this is important. And so when we talk about how we see symbolic parallels, that it's telling us something particular about the story and what that means. So ring theory is a literary uh, theory that is used to help explain how writers try to make stories kind of jive more with humanity. And I have this really great quote from from Dan Harmon, who talks about uh, storytelling in gen- general. And Dan Harmon, who is the kind of creator of Community, as well as he's one of the, you know, producers and creators of Rick and Morty, he actually uses the hero's journey every single episode of the stories that he is creating. So he full on plans out a cyclical journey every single episode. And he's known for drawing a circle on the whiteboard that of the writer's room and then applying the, the circle to the story. And he said, storytelling comes naturally to humans, but since we live in an unnatural world, we sometimes need a little help doing what we do naturally, drawing a circle and then dividing it in half vertically and divide that circle again horizontally. We start at 12 o'clock position, we go clockwise until we can tell the full story. And he goes into like how he breaks it down into the hero's journey. But he also talks about in kind of his blog about storytelling is that he almost can't unsee the circles as they apply. Ring theory is applying the hero's journey, but in such a way that there are so many circles that it like, it's almost overwhelming. How many circles apply? And many scholars, people that analyze Star Wars have said, oh, Star Wars is ring theory. Of course it is. You know, the each individual movie has a ring in it, a hero's journey, a story that is being told start to end, they have a need, they go and go through their own journey and come back with something different than they had before. That is the change that these characters go through. Each trilogy has a ring. It is its own story in and of itself through the course of the trilogy. It is a three act play. In the little stories themselves, you have mini rings. And that's the key to like how Star Wars is like ring theory on steroids. Because you have momentary ring theory, Star Wars it rhymes, iterations 
of it. This is just so fascinating. So you will have little mini arcs for characters in like Rebels that will mirror other things that will happen in the rest of Star Wars. And it tells us something particularly interesting when this happens. What do you think, Chelsea? (laughs) This is actually one of my favorite aspects of Star Wars. Like I always think about I always think about it like a circle, like, mm-hmm. I mean, especially, especially the main nine movies, but then like when you, but I'm always so, I don't know, like you said, you were surprised by Vader Immortal. I, I am actually always surprised by everything. Like, I, I'm like, I read, oh, they're doing this again. What? <laughs> I'm like, I read, I read a, a comic and I'm like, oh, I see what they're doing. Like it, it yeah, this, this is a reference to, I mean, it, nothing is like made just for no good reason i guess like Mm -hmm. the the fact that solo had a plot where kira kills her evil master for her love and it exactly parallels the last jedi like Mm -hmm. these things aren't made they're doing it on purpose like it's very obvious this is purposeful and one thing that dan Harmon says and i i like talking about Dan Harmon because he's really thought about this a lot. He said, the structure is the same. By using this structure, you're creating something that feels similar. Where it differs is in the execution, is in the style. So when people get caught up on almost like the surface level aspects of Star Wars, and and it's still fine to understand and love Star Wars on the surface and be like, I like spaceships, yay! And like, I like, I like lightsabers battles and all of that is still fine but you are valid <laughs> you are valid that's that's fine i just particularly me and chelsea love to understand the why in some ways you know like the why of why this is happening and how and once you start to see the rings uh of the story which i actually want to add in that they're iterative rings not just ring theory, because this goes way beyond traditional ring theory. It is ring theory in that, you know, the nine movies themselves will all be one ring. There'll be consecutive rings within those rings. There'll be rings within the rings, rings within the rings, within the rings. It is just how Star Wars works. But there is iterative ring theory when you have aspects of Star Wars that repeat from a different angle. And it almost creates this 3D version of the truth. And how this happens and how this plays out is we see the Death Star explode at the end of A New Hope. We see the Death Star explode from Imperial eyes, multiple Imperial eyes in Lost Stars. Yeah. And what that means to people and how it feels to be both uh, consider the rebels to be genocidal maniacs and consider that they also saw Alderaan destroyed. It is fascinating. (laughs) We also saw the same thing happen with Hosnian Prime. In TFA, we see Hosnian Prime blow up. And yes, we see it on the surface level and we're like, oh, this is horrible. And they play it really well. And we get the John Williams swell of music and, and the heartbreak because of that scene with everybody's horror. But it it lies a little flat until we have the emotional iteration in resistance resistance, and we see it through (laughs) Kaz's eyes. I suspect we'll see Hosnian Prime blow up again sometime in the in the story, like in in the in the one story. I think so, too. Yeah. So there's there's this is the idea. So it is ring theory, the idea that we have this repetitive, iterative storytelling but why? 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 Why is this important, Chelsea? I, you can just like make up a random story about anything. But if you have like a thematic concern that you're really interested in, or mm-hmm. you you know that the other movies and the other materials were saying a certain thing, you want to say the same thing maybe again, so that it's almost like a motif or something like a musical mm-hmm. motif that's repeated like it, it kind of just it doesn't make it just like a, a confusing and chaotic like just random things happening it, it's it's this is a theme we're repeating it you recognize this mm-hmm. this is the same situation maybe maybe something a tiny bit different happened in it or there's a different like maybe when um ray confronts snoke 
it's a little different than when um, Luke confronts the Emperor, but it it feels the same. And you, I don't know, it 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 gives you a sense of cohesiveness to the thing. It's it's like using a really good um, color palette, like mm-hmm. something like just simplified colors, because like the more colors you use. Um, the more chaotic and messy and dirty it looks. But it, it's like you... using our blue orange filter on all your movies. <laughs> That's um, exactly what it is. No, it is. And it, it's like using John Williams and having repetitive Wagnerian musical strings and yeah, strings I mean... of strings of music. And, and, and this is so this is how do you tell a story through multiple stories this is the point and why why do you do this well i know why i know why you do this do you know why i'm not trying to put you on the spot i just want to you know. <laughs> well why why you wanted to have it like thematic cohesiveness across all of your materials actually i'm kind of amazed at how thematically it's very co- it's it is, it is i am I, I remember speaking with the Holocron keeper, Leland Chi, about this. And I'm like, this is the largest media enterprise that has ever happened. And he's like, I would say that that's correct. I mean, like, just if you think about another media try like this, like the Marvel universe, cinematic universe. They can't even get close to it. There is there is no parallelism. Okay, there's yeah. there's no thematic material. Or sorry, I don't mean to like rag on it, but like comparing the two, it mm-hmm. it seems obvious that one is um it, it, it's 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 a little more there's a little more going on than just like a, a we are a like a surface level. We are a group of people, and we're fighting an alien monster. Like they do have themes in in mm-hmm. adventures. And this whatever, is but this is like, layered thematic yeah. storytelling. Where yes, on surface you might get the straight story. But right. if you look at it through this ring theory, um, especially iterative lens, it creates a different view to the overall story. And that's where this will drive you crazy unless you can <laughs> think about it in a certain way. So once you start to dig into the onion, onions have layers like Shrek. Shrek is also the same story. <laughs> no! Don't <laughs> me like this! I can't deal with that. <laughs> Sorry, it's Tristan is old and swelled. <laughs> somebody, somebody pointed out that Shrek is Kylo Ren and I can't get over it. He is. Uh, <laughs> no! <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's not. Um, okay. I'm so horrified. I, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's okay, Chelsea. It's um, okay, but why do you do this? Okay, so... <laughs> Ring theory and the application of this sorts of storytelling is to mimic myth. Myth being our base storytelling is to mimic the the stories that we tell ourselves over and over and over again to try to make sense of our humanistic understanding of the universe. Okay, why do we do that? And why does myth change? Well, it changes and it adjusts and it iterates over time to help us understand the problem, fix it with the next generation and learn from our mistakes. Santayana is right in saying those that do not study history are doomed to repeat it. And I would add on top of that, those that don't listen to the changes in the iterations of story are doomed to miss the point. (laughs) Oh, you could say that again, especially about Star Wars. If you do not understand that the myth is changing over time and that the the story is trying to work through the problems of the past, which I've talked about this. I've talked about this on the Hinduism episode, but it is it bears repeating in that the story is iterating. It's telling you that these things are important when they repeat. They're important. It's just like a theme that you hear in John Williams. Every single aspect of the story repeats. It is fascinating visually costumes, sound, you know, every aspect, John Williams, every aspect of Star Wars repeats itself. It's very, it it makes it really, really interesting to think about. And visually appealing because the thing about brains, (laughs) the thing about brains specifically, um, pulling out my psychology degree, putting it on the wall for a moment. You have a psychology degree? Yes. Uh, Oh my goodness. This all makes sense, right? Yeah, I know. (laughs) When I put out my psychology degree, and I'm going to say, we like things as humans that repeat. The reason we like pop songs 
most of us, is because they have repetitive lyrics. <laughs> we like John Williams because he repeats and it feels comforting when we hear it again. We like repetitive storytelling because it helps us understand and and categorize in, you know, in a cognitive structure in our brains where things need to go. It it is like the shorthand to allow us to understand what's happening in a very complex environment. Star Wars is both simple and incredibly complex. It, it helps you digest certain things and yes. gives you words for certain things. Yes, and gives you concepts and helps you get there quicker. It's like using a trope. Yes, yeah, exactly. But Star Wars has its own trope language in its repetitive storytelling. <sighs> I love Star Wars. It's good. It's good. It's good. It, it's good, actually. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, Star Wars is good, actually. <laughs> now to Vader Immortal. Okay. So uh, <laughs> that actually all applies to Vader Immortal. Because it does. Literally, Vader Immortal is just... Another story. It's No, it's just retelling, like... There is nothing in Vader Immortal that is not in somewhere else in Star Wars. It is it's just this crazy specific and intentional repetition. But I wonder if like the almost um isolation chamber version of Star Wars storytelling was like okay, so but what if we put them in an isolation chamber? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. It's almost like it's almost like they took all of Star Wars and they like stuck it in this room <laughs> and then you get to like 3d walk around it it's fun yeah it's, it's really it is it is you know people talk about rebels being star wars a lot like they're like oh it's pure star wars and i'm like yes it is pure star wars because they have they have done something they've simmered it down to be the very palatable uh, food for children you know so that children can understand the themes the important structures see the repetitive storytelling nature and i'm going to do an episode on this upcoming soon about rebels and how it foreshadows and how it does this structure so that you can kind of see that i'm also going to be covering the mandalorian i totally expect mandalorian to follow along with what we've seen with other other stories and tell us Tell us some things that we've known before. Tell us the same story again in a different way. <laughs> it's kind of comforting to know that. I actually wish that they could like, like after the rise of Skywalker, they could like make a little documentary on exactly the writing process behind these kinds of things. It would be really fascinating. Uh, yeah. And I want to know if the rings will change after the rise of Skywalker. I know I'm like uh, it, it it's going to be a one closed ring. That's the that's the big closed ring. But the Star movie. Wars is still one story. So it's very it's interesting. I'm like yeah. will they are they going to start an entire new I know it's this I know it's the same story, but like are they going to start another big ring? I think so. So I suspect we're going to get the what we're going to get is very Star Warsian in that the rise of Skywalker is the end of whatever ring we open next. Oh, okay. So so it'll also okay. So I think we'll get the split between the Jedi and the Sith. Oh no. Oh, that actually makes so much sense. Because look at all the iconography that we're getting in the rise of Skywalker with the Jedi and the Sith coming back and the only way to heal that wound Wherever that wound happened, we don't even know. It happened at some point in the past. Well, we're going to want to ask when that happened after we see that it's healed. You know, I hope that it had to do with some forbidden love. I think it did. In my opinion, <laughs> that's the only it's, way you tell the story is forbidden the love. Story. Yep. Like and I hope that that Sith is a woman. Because that would be thematically very telling that the separation of the feminine was literal. <laughs> like she was actually harmed. That yes. would be really cool. Yes. Yes. Somehow, somehow the 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 need for power and control. Because if you listen to the, like the Sith code, it's about uh, feminine. It's all these feminine things like I will not be controlled. It's like feminism on steroids power is good emotions are good 
go power off. is like power is strength and uh like passion and yes passion my emotions free me oh yeah that's true yeah so i mean i think that's what's gonna happen but you know we'll we'll have to wait and see this is just speculation let's talk about vader immortal which is just the same story again do you want to talk about episode one so this is a vader immortal is a it's a three-part series and only two of the episodes have come out. And do you think that the third one will come out before Rise of Skywalker? Oh, if it does, it, it, it'll, it won't, we're not going to end up having, oh, I don't know. So how long ago did the first one come out? Oh, gosh, I don't know. Let me look. I feel like it was a long time ago. It was only, it was this year, though. So, huh. um, or maybe not. I'm Wait. of two minds. Let's see. Vader Immortal release date will arrive on June 20th. So that was like three three months ago wow okay so if we get it beforehand i can we can speculate how it'll end i suspect it'll be like kind of like my clone wars theory where we're gonna get some palpatine backstory on padme and palpatine um oh you think palpatine will be in it no 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 no. what i'm saying is like clone wars i think chief palpatine will be in clone wars i think that's the reason we've heard um Ian McDermott come back into the recording studio for Rebels because they decided to just randomly redo an episode of Rebels that was done by perfectly by by Sam Witwer. They did it for a reason. He was in the studio already. Yeah, I think um, he's definitely going to be... I mean, they could use him for anything. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's kind of like that in that they might just have that episode come out right after Tross and it it shows the parallels and rehammers the message. Well, let's let's go through it first and then we'll yeah. guess what will happen on the third episode. Yes. Okay, so it's actually not that long. The episodes aren't that long and not so it's it'll be easy to go through, but basically you play as a like the shady smuggler and you're just trying to live your smuggling life, but you get like kidnapped by in the first episode you get kidnapped by the like imperial imperial forces your ship is taken out of hyperspace and you're kidnapped to mustafar Mm -hmm. it's very mysterious because you're taken to darth you're taken to darth vader and um you don't this really scary guy in a mask hands you this artifact and he says open it (laughs) and or else i'll kill you Mm -hmm. and you are able to open this artifact and vader in a very um i i enjoyed it when vader said this but he said this is the one i've been searching for in, in <laughs> it's never clear that that the character is a guy or a girl you i are, know you are self-insert i am i am living my fanfic life with darth vader praising me you know <laughs> <laughs> you have a praise cake good to know no! <laughs> Chelsea, you're really awesome. I love well, you. Only when it comes to Darth Vader. Just Aww. kidding. So, um, the- <laughs> you really love. <laughs> Thank you. I just caught that. <laughs> He's like, ah, you're the one that I've been searching for. You're the one that I've been scouring the galaxy to find someone of your bloodline. Mm. And they repeat that about a hundred thousand times in the episode. So that's important. Your bloodline. You you learn that um, Vader means to counter death itself, and he wants your help to do it. Life and death. Yeah, life and death. Mm-hmm. That's true. Mm-hmm. And your and, and your ability to use the Force to unlock this object when you never knew that you had the Force is important to Vader's plans. And so you basically start trying to escape the castle because you don't like the sound of this, and mm-hmm. you're supposed to find this priestess who will help you get off Mustafar. So you don't help Vader conquer death, and and your you have a companion, your droid. Ah, uh, yes, the droid. Her, let's see, what's her name? Z O E three, and she goes by Zoe, I think. And she's adorable and wonderful, and uh, is sassy and uh, r- drives home that you're an idiot sometimes. I really like. Her. <laughs> I love Zoe. She's like the best droid. She's she's. She's she's droid superior. Um, and then you also rescue from the prison cell that you are whole, being held in. Is it Violet? Um, his his name is Vilip. Vilip. But they but Zoe keeps calling him Violet. I think so. Yeah. Um, it gets confusing. <laughs> so so he's just like this Mustafarian guy who is explaining. Oh no, it's really bad that Vader wants you to help 
uh, help you with this. This is scary. And like they, they basically act as you because you can't talk or interact. They have like, conversations so that yeah. you don't have to. <laughs> yes, exactly. So they they're that uh, aspect of the story. So basically, you you help you s- start escaping and. Um, you do a bunch of stuff in Vader's castle as you're trying to find this priestess. You find a Jedi lightsaber and have fun with a training bot. You, which I, I guess Darth Vader had a, a like blue lightsaber or, or was it green? I can't remember. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like a random Jedi lightsaber. And anyway, so you eventually start, you find yourself in like the room right next to where Darth Vader is. And you're, and it's very spooky because like you're looking through like these slats at him. It's like, like, like stairs almost or like a vent or something. And you're like yeah, you're looking yeah. at him and, and then there's like this um, almost like looking glass, yellow looking glass in a way. Yeah. Um, there's like a, there's like a pink pyramid sort of thing a yellow like glowing object but before that this guy that we know as the black bishop from episode two we know that he's called the black bishop mm-hmm. but he he's talking to vader and he says ah you finally found one of the last descendants of lady Corvax, and you can use them to help make the eon engine and vader's into it mm-hmm. and then black bishop goes away oh black and bishop. Vader, what is your deal <laughs> I think I know what his deal is, okay. but we'll talk about that in episode two. <laughs> so um, he, what? So you 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 find out from that that you're supposed to help Vader unlock Lady Corvax's sanctum and gain ma- mastery over death itself. Um, mm-hmm. And then you spy as Vader has a breakdown about Padme. Basically, he he goes up to this glowing pyramid thing takes off his helmet how did you feel about that <laughs> oh my god this scene like shakes me to my core every time that i i, I rewatch it so, so okay. he kneels down Good. we we kind of see padme come into focus and it is uh the scene that she is telling him that she is pregnant from oh do we see padme um, you can kind of see her a little tiny oh. bit. Yeah, it's definitely like from the movie. Like they've taken that scene. Um, oh. they haven't altered the 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 like verbiage at all. Um, he kneels down. He tries to reach for her. He takes off his helmet. Um, it's it's shocking that he yeah, it's, is so intimate in that moment. It's really good. I really yeah. liked it. Like uh, you're like scared spying on Darth Vader as he's like exposing himself basically like he's becoming Anakin he's for a revealing moment. parts of himself like, he he becomes yeah. Anakin and for they, a moment and, just as much as yeah, he becomes and, and Anakin in the, in the Charles soul run when he tries to save Padme from the balcony he becomes yeah, Anakin exactly. physically in that like dreamscape world he steps forward and tries to call out to her. It's really interesting because of all all of Vader's materials are very similar to each other. It's mm-hmm. it's all about the same thing. Like if you, read, if you read like the book Lords of the Sith, it's about the same thing as Vader Immortal. He thinks about Padme the whole time in his head. It's <laughs> yeah. I mean that book, the 2015 run of Vader, he's constantly thinking about Padme. We get full images of him of her in his brain, like from. That are drawn out on the page. Um, yes, his whole journey in the 2015 run is about trying to find her, trying to have power to be able to bring her back. Um, yeah, this is just a uh, this is the same ring type situation. And it, it it's it's some it's interesting because like people people might think like oh they should think of a different story to tell with him, but it's like no, this is like literally the only story that's important with him. It's actually probably similar. Is it this? Is it similar in Clone Wars? Like he actually maybe it isn't. What maybe maybe it, like his 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 material in the Clone Wars? Does he he really? Whenever Padme is taken away from him, he loses his shit until he can get her back. Yeah, exactly. He he beats up Clovis at the very thought that she might, you know, have him sleep on the couch. <laughs> Anakin. No, he oh, is man. he is this He's obsessive that boy. force of nature. I think what's really interesting about how they've done Vader going forward, and yes, they're doing a lot of Vader, but this is all purposeful. 
This is this is this is priming us. This is a primed situation. Um, what is interesting, if you look through it through the symbolic lens, like Chelsea and I talked about in our reverse Anadella episode, and it, I highly recommend you go and listen to that because we do talk a little bit about Vader Immortal, but we're going to deep dive into it in this one. But Anakin is dead. He is Vader in the suit. And this ties to kind of the mythology of Osiris being trapped in his coffin right. and like being stuck in the underworld. And if you imagine the underworld in many ways, like being in hell, which Vader is in because he's constantly burning his, he feels like he's constantly burning when he dreams about when he goes into the dreamscape in the Vader uh, comic, Charles Soul run, like everything is burning. Right. <laughs> when he, when he meditates, he's burning. Like it, he, he is in hell. We can symbolically view it through this lens. If you are in hell, you're going to try to repeat the things that you wish you could change and be unable to change them. Right, exactly. And and so it, it wouldn't make any sense if there was like a Vader story that was just like a random, like new, new story. Like Vader does something new besides like is stuck in the same kind of like pur- purgatory prison. Like, it, so it makes sense that he's doing the same things. As you said, it wouldn't make sense if... Uh, Vader were to, um, you know, have a story that doesn't kind of apply to this because that is his story while he is in the underworld, which is from the moment that he puts on the suit to the moment that he he is redeemed at the end of Return of the Jedi. Basically, he obsessively does two things. He hunts down Jedi. Mm -hmm. And then when he's done with that, he thinks about Padme. And eventually he thinks about his son when that is introduced as a (laughs) storyline. Oh, uh, yes. Back to the recap of it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, after you watch this crazy breakdown that, um, like, he, he starts, he, like, yells, and I don't, Destroys I'm not room. sure when he breaks, I think, like, you, right. Yeah. And you, after that, you descend, you start descending further into Darth Vader's Black Castle, and you find that in the caverns beneath Darth Vader's castle is a shining white castle with a beautiful golden dome, the exact opposite of Darth Vader's castle. Mm-hmm. And you find out that it is Lady Corvax's castle, who is your ancestor that gave you these powers that you're suddenly like, oh, I have powers. I want to talk about the colors for a second, if that's okay. okay. White and golden or beige right because gold is is partially beige is padme's colors and is ray's colors right black and red which are the primary palette that are used in um and and one of the thing when you go into Cor- lady corvax's um castle is that you actually see like the walls are made out of stone and these natural like yeah um yeah naturally looked looking yeah naturally (laughs) looking caverns whereas everything that is above invaders castle is metal and red and black which is and there are and kylo there is yeah visually similar things in these physical locations i need to go back and look at it but the there was art down there there was suddenly artwork on the walls and like sculptures and things yeah it's interesting we're, we're- that one um there's a there's a there's a one particular painting i'm gonna actually try to call it up um where we're like um zoe stops you and it's like oh this is lady corvax is that the one yes so you descend further into the black castle you find the white castle and you enter it and then inside that white castle you find the priestess that you were looking standing beside what looks like a what was it a yonic symbol which is a feminine uh it looks it looks like a yoni which right. um in hinduism is the pavarti version of the combination between shiva so you she's standing beside beside that and she as she when she meets you she gives you a vision she gives you a vision of what happened to mustafar mm-hmm. did you want to listen to that yes when we actually have the two pieces of a yoni and a lingam together it is the union between the feminine and the masculine in the hindu religion it's basically shiva and um parvati together in almost balance and okay. without one um y- you have just a feminine symbol right right and that that's what's being told us that this is 
visually, this is a feminine story that's being told, um, quite obviously. Right. So we're, we're within this beautiful white castle that was made by a woman. And we're seeing these feminine symbols. And we're talking to a priestess. Mm -hmm. And okay, that's, so yeah. I have it up here. Let me... Oh, man. Um, okay. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it, the storytelling, like, because this is a podcast and you cannot see it. Go and watch uh, walkthroughs if you're not able to or play the game. It is beautiful. You can look where you want to go, where you want to look if you actually play the game. It, it is really pretty. It's done with this, like, almost like ink-like brush strokes for this vision part. But, like, in 3D. It's really beautiful. In 3D. 3D. Yeah, like it's it's really beautifully designed and all right. So I had never heard his name. It's Sardoin. So I don't know. I've never I haven't been able to find it written down. Sardoin. I've just been calling him Lord Corvax. Yeah, he's Lord Corvax <laughs> and he's got a beard, which is cool and she looks beautiful, which is nice and yeah. I noticed at that one that she was like wearing a dark cloak and I was like, that reminds me of Weird. dark gray, actually. Weird. I'm like, mm. um, and we see that there's an armored figure with like a long tight pike or spear that actually stabs. Right. Um, a, Maybe a, a lance. lance. That yeah. would be really campable if it was a lance. There's that story about the like, it, it, he tells a story about the wo fighting your dark brother who is wielding a lance, and you both they both hurt each other. I don't know. Could be could be something like that. But we we heard you know Mustafar was beautiful once. Yes, a green and verdant land, and was attacked by outside forces. But it was actually the lady Lady Corvax stealing the heart. Of Mustafar, the bright star that caused Mustafar to so become You're telling me hell. that this is uh, Moana? I'm telling you that this is Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's both. The heart of Tahiti yes. it, it is actually a physically physical thing. That's true. Right? Yeah. And it becomes a lava monster. It becomes a lava monster. Do you think that there's a circle structure within all of Disney films? I think that they've all read The Heroine's Journey because they were forced to in the 90s. <laughs> so um, let's let me think. So there's also the, the idea of the bright star. Mm -hmm. There's a reference with that. Like the thing that Lady Corvax steals yes. is called the Bright Star. And thanks to Mylene on Twitter for pointing this out to me, but it's Bright Star is apparently a famous poem by Keats. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. So listen, listen to the, like me recapping sure. it because po poetry is hard to parse. So this is like what, what it's about. It's about a man wishing he was as immortal as a star. So he can lie on his young beloved's breast, always listening to her breathing. And if that's not possible, he would rather die because it's not worth living if he can't listen to her breathe forever. What? Yeah, it's apparently a really famous poem. And it's about Darth Vader, basically. <laughs> well, and, and one thing that, like, I definitely think that the Bright Star also parallels to the power of femininity and creation and all of that. And if we look at all of the twin suns, um, twin intertwined stars, right? That we are seeing in the media leading up to the rise of Skywalker. Um, Ray yeah, has a star behind her and Kylo has a star behind him. And Ray is the bright star. Right. That is, sorry, that is so 
cool. I, I would not have thought of using the twin sense of Tatooine to be like this, this uh, really cool visual reference to like dark and light. It's so cool. It's so cool. Here's my crack theory that's probably true. Symbolically, the stars of Tatooine oh. are watching over Luke as he grows up like his parents. And that's why he stares at them. Man. That's why he stares at them. And that's why he sees them when he's dying. And in his final moments as he oh. turns into a force ghost, he realizes the twin sons are his parents and that he's the, who he's trying to save at the I end mean, of TLJ. Luke. That's good. See, that's like that's like um, looking back on things and like giving them more meaning than they even had. Like that was such a that that moment and this is the iterative yeah. ring theory, right? This is the idea that the ring theory not only is the rings, but also the iterations on those rings that happen in future storytelling because they're given opportunity to tell the story again from a different angle, which means that they can impart wisdom and knowledge and concepts into things in the past that maybe yeah, like, didn't have those things before. Like, that was such a profound moment for like many, like so many people in 77 when they watched him watch that sun setting for the first time like but it's it also means it's going to change what the force theme mm -hmm. means mm -hmm. because the binary sunsets theme will mean kylo and ray in the end <laughs> it's true i think that that's already true honestly it is true, but I, I just need to say it out loud and actually say, look, we're going to actually find out that the binary sunset theme it applies to these divine I was pair, that this divine pair, which are literally heavenly bodies that are meant to be together because of the force. And the dark, evil old magician is the third party that comes and brings war and destruction to the world, wounding exactly. that divine pair. It literally happens in this vision. The divine union, dark versus divine union, happens. In this uh, Mustafar vision? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. The dark figure that comes in between. He is... The, the dark figure in the war comes probably for the power of the feminine, the power of creation, the, the bright sun, bright star. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if, like... Ray and Kylo just had the force theme as their love theme. I think they're going to get something else that's the force theme like multiplied. <laughs> what I what I hope is that they get get a new one, but like it's already acting like that for them. It is already, yeah. That I mean, they they played the the force theme when they touched, which is symbolic union, right? So it's like, uh, um, I think that it's already associated with that. So it, it's actually already kind of changed the. It's already iterated what binary sunsets means. But I, I'm excited to see The Rise of Skywalker to see if there's any more said about like that with the music. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited too. Anyways, that was my, that was my, hey, this is the a thematic thing that's <laughs> happening in the story. Exactly. Uh, Ray is the bright Ray is the star. Bright star. Um, <laughs> And so I guess we could pause and say this This is actually about uh, Ben Solo, this this video game. Yes, this video game is also about Which Ben Which is Solo. why I'm so stoked about it. It's I, I wasn't really expecting it, him to be in it, but it's, it's like you're playing as Ben Solo. So like um, you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're a smuggler, you're a smuggler, right? <laughs> you're in your smuggler yep. ship. You have a. You have a. You're gonna go to the. Um. Oh, where was he going? He was. He want. He wanted to take some spice to Shadow Market. He had a thing that he was doing. Um. And yeah. He was on his way with his droid to take some spice to Shadow Market. Um. And he gets pulled mm -hmm. off by track. Vader, the influence of Vader. Um. um it's by some, Vader. Some kind of dark um entity that kidnaps him or or not i mean he's kidnapped but it's like he's overtaken by it almost he he's told mm -hmm. that he is the descendant of a bloodline and he has powers because of it and he needs to learn the force because of it you're um if mm -hmm. 
you have an ancestor who destroyed a world for love of a spouse and you are dealing with the consequences of that. It makes me go, when did Lady Corvax have children? Probably pr- probably at the very last <laughs> second. Like like um Osiris and Isis, like out of the out of the body of the dead, yeah. like divine twins kind of thing. So Mm-hmm. And that there's this this ancient bloodline that is powerful and has unique unique power in and of themselves. Um, so you um th- your ancestor has the key to power over life and death, but but it is ne- you need it needs to be wielded by a descendant. Like Vader, Vader has the key, but he needs a descendant to wield it. That's a direct quote. Yeah. So this is, I mean, it's yeah. literally so parallel to Ben Solo that it's it's a little hard to look. Yeah, it's it's I it's about it. your Ben yeah. in this. Like you basically. It, it, they've been having Vader and uh, Ben interact a lot in the materials. Like they had Vader quoting him in the Vader comics, and and drawing the direct parallels to them having the same situation, but that Ben will fix or do things differently than what Vader did. So Vader, so Ben is the same, yes, but is fixing the problems of the past which is again the ring theory fixing the problems of the previous generation i i absolutely loved your thread on the kylo comic that just came out that was so about kylo and vader like we've been getting a lot of material about kylo and vader um like it's like direct parallels are being called but then him saying but this time it's going to be different yeah, like it, I was so I was really excited about the the Kylo comic because it's like it it really said Ben is Ben is going to finish what Vader started and he's going to do it better and he's going to do it with less bloodshed and he's going to do it with like it, he's going to be this great no I'm I'm so excited he's going to be a great hero that's what I uh, I mean <laughs> that's what it said yeah. Yeah, no, no, that's what it said. And it, it also said with with the Nietzschean God is dead, you know, fuzzy Nietzschean your quote, God, is, God dead. is dead, your God is dead. It is saying that the force will change the life, uh, the how we understand and deal with the force, because Nietzsche said God is dead in reference to, you know, Christianity and its current form in how it is absorbed through these dogmatic religions that don't actually tie to the truth any longer is dead. We shouldn't be doing it that way any longer. Um, it, it just creates false falseness in our faith. And so he is saying your God is dead to say the force will change. Things will be different. We will actually get change this time. I didn't think of that. That's really good. Ben Ben, ben would quote an existentialist, that nerd. <laughs> He's such a nerd. He, <laughs> he practiced calligraphy. So that is like a, a really re- quick recap of that Kylo comic. So it, this makes sense. Like, basically, he goes to this. No. Actually, maybe you could explain it. You you had a really I didn't catch that. that the the stormtrooper was Vader. <laughs> like, I didn't catch that part. Oh, uh, you don't think I'm crazy with that? No, oh. no, a hundred percent. Like what, what, what I'm getting out of these material, these extra materials with Vader is that like they're really it's this it's really this conversation between him and, and Ben almost because he's talking to this protagonist in this video game. Yep. He's interacting with you there. So I've had this kind of like weird like what are they doing? What is going on in this story that like Vader is there and not right. there? Like, Anakin is there and not there. And, like, it really threw me for a loop when I read that Anakin was going to be a Force ghost in the Force book that's coming out in right. November. I was like, what is going on? Well, I have a theory for you slash a myth for you. Um, Osiris. Right. 
He is broken into 14 pieces. He's He was torn um, apart, you might say? He was torn apart <laughs> by Set. Um, okay, so what do I think is going on? I think that Anakin is split into a bunch of pieces and, and part of the monster husband reformation myth is that the wife goes around and collects all of the missing pieces to reassemble the husband and re-remember him differently. So I talk about this in the Dark Union versus Divine Union episode a little bit, but on surface. So what I actually think is happening is that the universe through the force is telling Ben, who has a large aspect of Anakin within him, probably the dark shadow part of Vader. And, you know, this kind of ties back to the concept art that um, Anakin had was split between being Anakin and Vader and flowed almost between those two sides. So the concept was in the creator's minds, the idea that Anakin is not okay yet. Right. Right. Anakin is not whole. I think that when he became, and this goes back to some Jungian theory too, some Jungian um, and uh, Robert Bly talking about shadow and that to be a person without shadow, missing their shadow is to be transparent and ghost-like. Right. I, I, you're not able to interact with the world because you are transparent, you are unable to interact but perhaps pieces of Anakin are spread throughout the galaxy maybe C-3PO has a piece of him because he is an avatar of Anakin he is his creation he's his child in some Mm -hmm. ways he is he fulfills aspects of being a father to and and concerned person for the children of Anakin and Padme he is there when Anakin is not able to be for Padme. So maybe C-3PO has a piece of who Anakin was. And this is symbolic, right? So there's there's some sort of knowledge that C-3PO is going to give us. Um, and in that Kylo comic, so this is the Age of Resistance comic, the Kylo story starts with, we know the Empire has been to this planet before dealt with all of these situations before the commander it's rutherford i think yes commander rutherford he is like oh i can't believe i'm back here putting on my armor again so he's literally putting on the persona of who he was previously in the situation his head looks like both kylo's cracked egg mask that we're going to see in the rise of skywalker which i think represents how anakin is broken into pieces um and and is coming back together and also he looks a lot like um sebastian shaw anakin at the end of the return of the jedi right with his uh troubled head yeah and people describe that head like a cracked egg right so they so this guy is vader yeah <laughs> this guy is anakin so he's, he's a part of him no he's he is he is anakin with the, he is he is return of the jedi anakin he is knowledgeable in what has happened before and is trying to advise and say don't do this kid yeah he's taking one look at ben and he's like oh man okay <laughs> which is great i actually i actually really liked it like it, it i mean think thinking about it like symbolically is uh as if anakin was able to speak to his grandson or those characters were able to interact yeah i would think that it would be like that actually um it, like anakin yeah anakin and- at peace is like it's not a contest you don't need to live up to me it's fine like yeah, yeah. and if you view it through that lens like it's it's anakin post post return of the jedi talking to himself as a younger version yes, of himself exactly. it's fascinating exactly. because it's like we then when he says things we literally see vader doing those things right there's like big 
Vista flashbacks. Yes. And we see the parallels directly and we hear the parallels in the conversations like, oh, Vader was defeated before by the god, by this by this evil creature. This, yes. This, um, and, and it's not evil per se, but it is an embodiment of the the force right so the the zillow beast has always represented the unquenchable hunger of the dark it side. also it also has ties to palpatine right didn't palpatine want to yes yeah. this could be a palpatine surrogate right so this unquenchable well, thing yeah palpatine and, wanted to like uh, uh what is it like clone it or he he was the one yeah. that unleashed it. clone it make armor out yeah. of it like use just it. use it Use it to expand so, so the dark is, side, basically. This piece in the galaxy. is like, yeah, could be a clone, right? <laughs> of the original Zilla beast, we don't know. And so he is, he is Palpatine in this story, right? right? What I find is fascinating is when you compare Ray and Kylo's journey in these two stories, Ray and Kylo's unique two comics, and oh, sorry, um. No, just in general, you compare them. Ray finds a solution that Ben could never think of. Hmm. What was that? And they both face a giant monster. She has an underworld story where she's literally in a coffin. Right. Um, all of the creatures within it all have arm wrappings. <laughs> right. Um, it, her story in Ray's age of resistance story is a speed run of padme if padme could fix all of her problems right the journey into the underworld the scavenging of the pieces of her yeah. lost uh spouse the reassembling mm -hmm. the the fixing the the freeing from slavery which they they added i think that to the idea of slavery is really big with padme and ray i think because they keep mm -hmm. adding it to slavery and being controlled, right? That's a big thing for Padme. And they've they've really upped that with Queen Shadow and her desire to fix that. But right. the thing that Palpatine always does is he prevents Padme from solving that problem ever. Right. He controls her to prevent her from actually doing what she needs to do. Right, exactly. Which is free the galaxy from yeah. the pain of the dark side. That is that is what slavery represents. Minds, slavery, um, the the Star Wars is the pain of the galaxy, the eternal suffering of the galaxy. I was I was going to mention Clone Wars because was it wasn't the Zillow Beast in there and they couldn't deal with it. But yeah, it was unstoppable. But Ben like literally just freaking did it. Man, I love Ben so much. Yeah. He's going to be so great in The Rise of Skywalker. This is literally... A I mean, and, you know, there's the Tristan is sold yes. parallel to him killing the dragon. Too. Yeah, exactly. Right. But he didn't... Yeah. At least he didn't get, like, hurt by it. Um, the... So he finds... It's actually a little hero's journey in that comic for him because he descends, mm -hmm. into, the, descends into the belly of the whale and is reborn... Um. Yep. Having found a new, he solution. can actually, right? Yeah, he can actually change what was in the past. So typically in right. Hero's Journey, there is a sacrifice, a something that is taken. Yeah, yeah he dies in this. He yes. he symbolically dies. He's he's consumed. And so this is this this comic is actually a really like blatant like this is what's going to happen in rise of skywalker <laughs> honestly but, but we're also getting that i think in vader and, yes! Mortal, and we also got that in <laughs> yeah. rebels like that's where like it, when you talk about the 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 ring theory and the chiastic storytelling and the you know iterations that happen that this is where it starts to drive you crazy and it's it's it does drive you crazy but it's it's since it's so it's so like transparent it's really fun well it's only transparent when you actually start to see it <laughs> I, in this way I right so, so it, if not you're like why is this happening why 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 well i'm telling you why it's so that we can actually have a story that fixes the problems of so the so basically that that vader or that kylo comic was like uh, ben is going to do everything he's actually gonna succeed and 
he's gonna die but come back to life and finish what his grandfather started it's gonna be great ray's going to do the padme story yes and i love the one line from the from the queen or whatever the queen queen bug on the planet she's like you weren't supposed to come back (laughs) it's like wink wink nudge nudge no what i mean it's so interesting like both of these both of these comics were like like exactly parallel but different because yeah because they have different through only through the compassion only through the compassion because i think what we're gonna and i don't know if now is the time to speculate on what i think is going to happen high level other than dark union (laughs) and reverse anadella but i I think what we're gonna have is (laughs) but yeah 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 but i i i I think we're gonna get a version where ben attempts to kill palpatine and you can't kill palpatine and so ray is going to give compassion and that will heal the galaxy i've never really i i've been like purposefully not really thinking about the like big confrontation yeah i i don't want to think too much about the plot points but that's what happened in the ray and kylo comic Mm. That's what they're priming us for, is that there's two solutions to this problem. Right. We have to get Palpatine to the point where his god is dead. He he is the the lowest that he can possibly go, but he could come back. Mm-hmm. And what is the difference this time? Yeah. I... <sighs> it's fine. We can talk about it closer, later, after. We'll be like, oh, yeah, it was totally that. That was cool. <laughs> that's really that's really interesting i i don't know just wait until shave demption and you'll be on board i mean i i like love, i said i love all wizards so i i would be so stoked about it <laughs> i love that back to vader immortal that the engine are we gonna talk about that the vader? engine <laughs> yes let's actually talk about vader immortal finally um just we just so love much. ben so much i love ben I love that she creates the Aeon engine, which is basically Eon, which is like forever. That's cool. It's Aeon. No, it's Aeon. But I mean, it's it's meant to be Eon. No, I think it's Eon. E-O-N. A- no, it's Aeon. What? It's A-E-O-N. But it's pronounced Eon. Oh, I'm not that smart. Okay, let me think. So, what does Aeon mean? I, I've been I've been thinking it was a different word the whole time. Oh no, no, that that's the same word that I was thinking of, but it's just spelled different. Okay, yeah, yes, it, they spell it um both ways to kind of. So, Aeon is like has two meanings, <laughs> and life, mm-hmm. life, energy, the force. She created a force engine. Right. Cool and forever. Right. Eternity. Generation. It's a good name for it. Forever. It is perfect. It is beautiful. So um Eon and Aeon are very it are basically the same word. They're just spelled differently in different circumstances. Vital force or life force is what George imagined the force to be first. So she is using the feminine creation aspect of the galaxy, the bright star, to create a life force engine. That is what's being said. Yes. I don't know why people don't Google names. <laughs> it's 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 very obvious when when you when you Google it. So so there's a there's a bright star hidden in Lady Corvax's sanctum, but Vader needs a descendant to wield it. Um, the priestess tells you to help Vader retrieve this bright star, but not to give it to Vader, but instead to use it to help heal Mustafar because you can use to give it back to the people. Yeah. Give it back to the people. Give it back to the people. Um, And then at at the end of, at the end of the episode, Vader comes in and forces you to unlock the said sanctum with the artifact he had you open earlier. And then you have some fun fighting robot guards with him. And that's the end of the episode. Mm -hmm. Um, We were not expecting episode two anytime soon. I know they they dropped it like uh, Beyonce, right? Or is it just, Oh, hey, here's a trailer and it's available now. And we're like, what? It's not even Force Friday yet. What are you doing to us? 
I know there's there's so much coming out all the time. Um, so should we talk about um, Vader being Lady, like the parallels between him and Lady Corvax and the Jungians? Well, stuff? I think when we get that, like, so, so there is, t- <laughs> yeah, Vader is Lady Corvax because yep. we've already talked about a little bit how this is a repetitive story. You know, when you, if you, if you can't kind of picture the parallels in your head, just squint. Yeah. So lady, lady. <laughs> and be like, okay, so we have a powerful force user, uh, embodiment of good and compassion and all of those things and the bright star was there to help you know bring bring life to the galaxy anakin is the perfect jedi remember and then um love of his life is wounded um and uses something that is meant to be good his own powers and the force and things like that to try to prevent that from happening to try to prevent the death from happening and the natural cycle of death and rebirth. And that causes the cataclysm on the planet. In addition to the, you know, the war that is happening in the attack on the planet. So Vader, if he had any self-reflection at all, but uh, I mean, he doesn't because he's like a, a ghost. Like He can't really mm-hmm. learn anything new until, until um, Luke comes Luke. and helps him. But mm-hmm. it, right now, if he had any self-reflection, he'd be like, oh, that's me. But he doesn't. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> Darn so it. we... <laughs> what what's what i found really fascinating is that like as soon as you start delving down deeper underground which is the unconscious i, I mentioned that in the reverse on Adala episode mm-hmm. you find this white castle this feminine castle and like you you it's really like vader's yes it's his anima so it's his uh unconscious inner feminine that he must incorporate into himself to become a um complete human in Jungian psychology um mm. it's it's just this visual metaphor of vader's inner psyche we're delving down underground into into parts of him and you find yes. you find this an in, in, interesting feminine version of uh darth vader's story yeah and and there's visual parallels within yes. it so it starts out and um he's basically like training you in the force and he um insults you a lot which i felt i felt a, a lot of joy all of these fanboys who are like vader like please worship me i you know give me give me praise vader and he's like you're an idiot i hate you, you he suck. like throws a rock at you i love my vader. squish it with the force and apparently the force aspect of it is very fun and people liked using the force rather than the lightsaber necessarily which is cool it looked like fun i i was watching this guy and he was just grinning the whole time <laughs> um so the you you go further in you use the key that you had originally unlocked with your bloodline to open up the inner sanctum of uh lady corvax's castle through it you see some really cool wall iconography what did you see on that i I didn't really get a chance to um examine it or did you not i did i took a couple of screenshots actually let me let me open up my did you notice how vader uh, lady corvax had the same kind of scar as anakin yes i did so um he's telling you what you need to do and how you need to use lady corvax's machines and her crystals and things like that to unlock everything and you're the only one that can you're the only one that can unlock the secrets of the past wow vader you're really just laying it on thick he he reassembles oh god this scene (laughs) he he reassembles the the pieces of lady corvax into oh i didn't put that together oh man all of the missing pieces of lady corvax gets put back together in a statue she looks like a female version of anakin with the scar in the center of her eye so this is telling you this is a bridge story between the left the right side of anakin's eye having the scar this is the one that goes in the middle story-wise from a repetitive ring theory perspective and the one that is on the left side the heart um the the left-sided way Mm -hmm. the important one the one that is true the truth path is ben's which is on the left side of his eye oh yeah you're right wait 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 it's in the (laughs) middle huh I was, I was looking at that middle. and I was like, okay, it's not in exactly the same place. No, 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 no. It's telling it's the you middle. the order of these oh stories. Oh my gosh, that's so smart. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
because Ben's is not exactly like Anakin. Ben's is actually no. really interesting. It's almost they almost really wanted to just cut his face in half. They didn't they didn't want it yes. to be on the side. They actually like I think that JJ really wanted like a yin yang right across his face. Yeah, but I think that they made it they decided to change it with the iterations and stuff like that and and make it exactly like on the left side of his his right eye, which is, you it's know, here. Josh uh Johnson has talked a lot about Campbell and the left-handed way mm-hmm. um and and look into that it's it's amazing how much stuff ends up showing up on the left side of of everything in Star mm-hmm. Wars and and when it shows up on the left side it's important there's something that happens in the Snoke comic that blew my mind what was it um so when I mean we already um, talked about the Kylo comic <laughs> I know. So, so when we'll cover the uh, Kylo enters <laughs> the Dagobah vision tree, magical tree, as John Williams mm-hmm. call him, call it, um, he enters and he sees his family, you know, at, at, in the future, like after he kind of deals with his uncle and stuff like that. But he sees his, his parents and Leia and Han are hold, oh, both right. holding their left hands and he is reaching out with his I left hand. That. The left hand is very important and not in a it is actually Matt Smith way. This is me teasing Twitter. I'm sorry. It, it Kylo is not Matt no, Smith. No. <laughs> but the left-handed way is a thing. So Campbell, look it up. It's cool. When Anakin was reaching out for Padme in the Vader comic, I think he reaches out with his wrong hand. Yeah, he reaches out with he reaches out with his left hand. Interesting. Okay. Um. <clears throat> so because because the left is like why we wear our rings on the left side. Our heart is on the left side. It is the connection to our center. There's stuff in there. I haven't dug into it nearly enough. There's also like a right-handed, like right right meaning um like left means sinister. So there's there's I think that there's also other places in Star Wars where it left means a sinister sinister thing. I I think because that's just it's not it's not cabal, but it's like just general symbolism, like symbolism, yeah. And and they go back and forth, but like Campbell had this like left-handed way right. thing. Um Left-handed people are supposed to be more evil and stuff. That's that's just like our right. culture being. <laughs> are you? I, I actually, I actually, I actually think that that left-handed symbolism was like in maybe in response to the left-handed way, like in some ways how in society we sometimes have things that like try to make things evil even though they're good like femininity and stuff like that like i actually think that there's something in that but i haven't had enough time to think about it i'd have to look at that again there's a lot of there's a lot of things um because like yeah it's it's just such such a common symbol that like left means sinister that i'd have to look at that again but i'm sure that there's i'm sure that that's part of it so I, I want to talk about um, that scene where he reassembles Lady Corvax. Yeah, I didn't momentarily. think about that, but I think you're right about this. <laughs> um, so he reassembles the statue, which again, the, re, the re-remembering is really interesting. But um, he says she was weak, oh, crippled I have, by I have sentiment. The quote. Wait, let me see. Okay. Um, your whole thing, dude, is bringing back your dead wife and you comment on this? <laughs> yeah. He basically he ba- he basically says he cautions you not to make the sentimental mistakes that crippled your force sensitive ancestor lady course. So it's not a direct quote but he says sentimental which is something that he has in common with uh, actually Ky- Kylo Ren. Yeah. Um he was weak. No it, it, like literally the, like literally the word sentimental. Um yeah oh, in really? the uh, I in the books, um, in the novelizations, um, there's a scene where um, Snoke goes to, in the first scene where Snoke talks to Kylo Ren, he says, uh, don't make the same sentimental mistakes that Darth Vader made or it oh, will destroy Lord. the galaxy. Right. Because he's talking about how Luke, like how oh, how um, yes. how Vader like turned from the dark exactly. side for his son. And if, if oh. you control F for sentimental, it's it's mentioned a few more times in the novelizations about Kylo Ren. It, it's like uh, there's a part where Snoke is staring at Kylo Ren while they're in the throne room and he's waiting to see if he'll kill Ray, and he's like oh man i sure hope he's not gonna make a sentimental mistake and then after <laughs> sentimental is such a word i know right after uh he wakes up after the throne room fight with ray mm-hmm. he thinks ah uh, she left me alive that was just another sentimental mi- decision he used the word sentimental again there so it's like okay <laughs> 
Goddamn Star Wars. <laughs> um, no, I never noticed that before. That's that's amazing. Oh, yeah. I- so sentimental is like remembrance of the past. It is literally ring theory in a word. Right. It's telling us that the lessons from the past are actually important for us to pay attention to. It is telling us that past storytelling in the chronology, but also in the the story, the one story of Star Wars is important. Oh, what, God. What, what's interesting, especially with the Ben and sentimentality, is that, oh, shoot, I had I had something. What was it? Um, oh, wow. I just lost yeah. it. I'm sorry. I don't know what I was going to say. He's always focused on the past. Oh, right. And- okay. That's what it was. Um, like, literally, this is the let the past die guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he has a song on his uh, Spotify playlist that has this lyric that comes up. And every time I listen to it, I'm like, man, it, 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 it goes, you can't uh, understand what lies ahead if you don't understand the past. That's a quote from his spotify playlist and every time i hear it i'm like you know what he does need to be sentimental he does need to look back on things so you are let into invader immortal um you you start to figure out how to control the different pieces of uh lady corvax's power right so you are learning how to be lady corvax so this is important because this is been in the parallel in the parallel storytelling again we've been saying this the whole episode is learning how to be Darth Vader. Uh, you are learning how to be Lady Corvax. And Darth Vader tells you, if the Force is truly your servant, it can unlock the secrets of life and death. Uh, you. <laughs> extra, extra guy. I mocked him on Twitter because I'm like, you're like, oh, don't, don't be sentimental. And it's like, you're literally doing this to bring back your dead <laughs> wife, dude. Like, we saw you crying over her just like two minutes ago. <laughs> you fool. Oh, wait, you didn't see us. <laughs> Never mind. Ignore please the don't, giggles. Please don't hurt um, us. Please don't hurt us. Yeah. And, and what I love is that <laughs> there's this absolute joke that I keep on pulling up and I say it every single time. Oh, my God. Vader and Ben are in denial. Oh, right. Because they're Osiris literally in denial. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> I hate it. T- t- but Take it from it. me. I don't, I don't want this. <laughs> you don't want them to be in the Nile? No, I just puns. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't, don't be stupid. Oh, wait, no. Um, and then you come across the inner sanctum, which is, uh, it feels very Harry Potter for some reason, but it's like lit with these uh, candle type lights around it. And um, there's, just to remind you and drive home the point that this is ring theory on the floor is a mosaic of rings within rings Ooh, within rings. i didn't i didn't see that one right in front of lady corvax do we want to listen to that one in the door okay yes we are going like rings within rings so we have to stop and talk about the snow comic now <laughs> it's just because star wars is I like know. this though that's that's part of so now you can see the rings within rings do you see all the little rings Oh, I see it. Okay. Do you see? Cool. So this is the visual uh, cue of what is happening, and some of the some of the pillars are destroyed. I think there's actually one uh, complete pillar, and now we see Lady Corvax's face coming out of the the doorway, and it's like pixelated, uh, like with these rocks. It's really cool. Man, he's just revealing himself, isn't he? Because that's him talking. Mm-hmm. That that's. Like so, he she's his unconscious. She's his unconscious. Lady Corvax is Darth Vader. She's she's his shadow. So yeah. she's speaking like the truth of what he really is. Anakin underneath. Yes. He says, "Wait, let me let me let me bring it up." He says, "So as Lady Corvax, this is like Anakin speaking." He says, "To you, my future descendant, hearing me now, or to you, my future descendant, hearing me now, tread carefully." You, you, my descendant, may have a chance to heal what I wrought. Please help me. Like, this is Anakin talking to Ben. And then Darth Vader is standing right there, and he, who is completely cut off t- from any of this knowledge or, like, self, uh, like, he, he, yeah, he can't, he can't do any of this. He, he says, nah, we're not going to do that. We're going to get that engine so that I can become unstoppable. So this is, it's very... This like made my heart. When I heard it. Hey, what's really interesting is that this kind of ties to dark versus divine a little bit in that um, I really do feel like in this story, particularly 
um, Vader is Palpatine because there's always kind of three aspects going on. And you yourself are Ben and Ray is the bright star, the power of creation, yes. the light side. Hmm. And because Palpatine represents evil in everyone. Right. And the desire for control. Yeah. Because Star Wars tells stories on multiple levels at once. <laughs> yeah, that I think that that's I think that that's true. About yeah. like just thinking. Yeah. Hmm. So it it's cool. It is. I like it. <laughs> see. So you you unlock the yoni with yeah, and with it's a, a you unlock the yoni. You use the little like key thing. You fall you fall um, down and you're spoken to by the that black bishop guy again. I want to just take a moment. So take a moment. And, and what happens next when you unlock the Yoni is like the elevator. And you knew it was an elevator because they literally use the elevator patterns on the walls at that moment. Um, did you know Wait, what? The, the Imperial? Oh, yeah. That's let cool. Wait, let me see. I, I think I took pictures. Uh, see? Oh, Look, my gosh. Pattern. What is up with that? Oh, my gosh. That, um, it's telling you is it, it was, so f- is a visual cue that it was going to be an freaky, elevator. That's freaky. Because elevators are so... It's like- Significant. So what happens it's as not- soon as you unlock the female key, keyhole? What happens? You, Do you, you remember? Descend. Oh, wait. Something happens no. with, to the room? I can't really remember. Yes. Okay. Vader gets attacked by a female monster. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that that monster. So there that- is a monster that kind of looks like a... I thought it, I thought it looked like a um, rancor, yeah, we'll just- but it's like a rancor with like four arms. Yeah, we'll just arms. call it a rancor. It... it, it and and this is where I'm gonna get a little myth- mythological. <laughs> Only a little. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This is my brain. I I can't stop it. This is Kali attacking Vader. This is the destruction feminine. Yeah, did you? She has the arms. <laughs> oh no, I didn't notice that. Oh my gosh. No, you're right. That's what it is. This is Kali attacking Vader because she she knows that he is an unjust so so kali Wait, is me... the vengeance side of pavarti who is the feminine creation aspect of um the hindu religion right so shiva and um kali are um kind of tied and whenever shiva becomes kind of oh my gosh a jerk and de- decides to destroy the world a little bit she has to go and literally stomp him under her feet. She beats him up until he is subdued and he comes back to his senses. So this this is literally the same motif as Rey in The Force Awakens, standing over yes. standing over Kylo Ren defeated. At yes, feet. but like that's because there is multiple arms. They are tying the Shiva and Pavardi myth more closely together from the that's story. So I, I noticed. And we know she's a feminine, feminine yes. creature thing because she has eggs. It's very important. She has. It's very important that she is feminine. And there's something that happens later on that we have to call out because it's important because she dies. Right. Um, actually, this isn't the first time that Vader has faced like a feminine monster that lays eggs. In the mm-hmm. Lords of the Sith novel, he and Palpatine descend into this cave and fight this great mother bug and the whole time he's thinking about padme and like parallels to like having to kill her and like it, 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 this is not the first time he faces uh the geonosis queen yes too. and also the like padme and his vision of her when he goes into the world between worlds and sees her she is like this sh- dark figure with scary eyes that rejects him and it, it, it's this because the feminine is mad yes. at him his feminine aspect the feminine aspect of the force is mad at the masculine aspect of the force. This is very important. And the only way that this can be fixed is by literally having the feminine beat the shit out of the masculine <laughs> for a while. That is that is the that is the mythology talking, not no, me. Good, good thing that Ben seems to be into it. So Yeah, he seems to like it a little bit. He's like uh, beat me cool. up. He's like, you know, actually I kind of deserve this. A lot of women make a joke that, like, Ben is a bottom, and yes, he is. <laughs> Silence bottom. <laughs> Silence bottom. Yeah. Um, but that that's what's happening, is that there is this 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 visual feminine 
parallel where um, Kali comes and beats the crap out of Vader for a while so that you can escape. There is a, a yeah, that's what it is. There, there's a there's a mm-hmm. dark feminine monster mother haunting Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. Yep. In every in, in almost every one of his in his things. subconscious yeah. in his subconscious. Yes. Yeah, we're down mm. underneath the castle. Like, why is there why is there yeah. this big four armed feminine monster down there haunting Darth Vader? It's like, hmm, mm-hmm. I didn't put the four arms thing together. That makes that make much more sense. She's Kali. That's awesome. Go Kali. And we know Lucasfilm knows about Kali because they pull in the Kali myth into um the tomb uh into Indiana Jones. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I don't know what That's to tell true. you. So when you when you go down the elevator, Black Bishop starts talking to you. Oh yes, Black Bishop comes back. We learn a little bit more about him. Which in the first episode, we're like, "Are you trying to help Vader? What are you trying?" Yeah, he to seemed to like be cozy with Vader because he like yeah, he like was giving him advice. You want to watch that part? Uh, or listen? No, to that I think part? it's okay. Uh, he just he just says uh, like the descendant is with you, and the Eon Engine will soon be within your grasp to Darth Vader, and it seems like he's like cozy with him but as soon as you're alone with black mm-hmm. bishop he changes his mind he changes his tune he, he says no i want you i have it actually yeah go I'm ahead gonna, yes right out. heed me vader seeks the bright star he must not succeed i have glimpsed a terrible feature where he controls its power entire galaxies will crumble in his grasp so, surrendering the vitality in order to feed his insatiable hunger you must find the bright star before vader does return it to the mustafarians entrust it to their keeping and perhaps heal this cursed world i have suspended time but only briefly you must climb the tomb contains the bright star the tomb that contains the bright star lies above i am weakening go Hmm. huh weird um okay (laughs) let's dissect this so yeah this 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 aspect of the couple is able to see the future like ray that's interesting um also because in a way okay but that that's like later we find out that black bishop is actually lady lord corvax right but we'll talk we find out black bishop is lord corvax who is stuck between life and death cursed because of what was attempted to happen like what he had, what lady corvax had attempted to do before so so if um lady corvax is darth vader if if lady corvax mm-hmm. is anakin then that means this black bishop slash lord corvax figure is padme yes. and and within the tomb of this padme figure is the bright star that needs to be yes. reborn in order to have the power to there's also an important aspect. It needs to be given back to the people. Yes. It needs to be freed from being captive. So there's this concept that, you know, the force is sick, trapped, broken, mm-hmm. right? Because this is also talking about the force. Oh, Star Wars. Hmm. So there, there's this vision of the future where Darth Vader's hunger will consume the galaxy if he gets this engine. So, oh, it's so pretty it's done. It's done really with the pretty. same um, broad, broad paint strokes as well. Mm-hmm. And um, after that, you fight that Rancor, the four-armed uh, avenging goddess. <laughs> but you don't. Yep. So you leave that area, and you end up finding um, finding the Rancor again. Who's, who's <laughs> in, mad at Ben this time? <laughs> Mad at Ben this time, yeah. <laughs> the main uh, character. She she is in a pit and she is protecting eggs. Oh, I didn't see the eggs. Um, yeah, I actually have the clips. This is from an interview. Snow says the creature is female, and if you look carefully, you'll see some of her eggs as you explode. Oh yeah, yeah. So th- this is a. I'm excited. I'm excited. To- also, the bright star is yellow red, which is the same as Ben's lightsaber. I'm just going to say It's also that. a yin yang sim- symbol. Yeah. It's also uh, the same symbol as Joseph Campbell's like <laughs> um, little thing. There's also, it's like the, uh, when you just do a at peace ink movement with, with ink on a brush. Oh, I didn't know that. Calligraphy? It's, it's, <laughs> yes. Yes. I forget what it's called. Um I don't remember what it's called. I apologize. I'm not always super smart. Um, but it it is basically like Zen in in its nature. Uh, 
because like it's like with a with a brush you create this movement and this kind of circle and it's if you look at any of joseph campbell's foundation books it's behind the name joseph campbell here let me show you oh yeah yeah i i saw that who is it that found that that was um ty ty black who too you, smart who you know and love um yeah is this yeah it's almost like a uh what is that ouroboros too a little bit anyway i i don't remember what the name is you guys will tell me i'm sure in the comments and be like marie claire why couldn't you think of this name i'll be like i don't know it has a lot of um meaning to it in and of itself it's an it's a symbol <laughs> symbols within symbols within yeah, that's symbols like a, for it, Star Wars. It, yeah so you're pulled into this angry pit which is uh, i'm like oh you can see my notes uh <laughs> angry put in a pit you're like pad padme is in this pit trying to protect the future she angry <laughs> she pissed at you and even though there are good people the mustafarians are trying to help you out trying to help you solve your problems they end up killing her right so they are continuing the suffering of the galaxy they kill the kali monster but i don't think she's really dead i think we're gonna maybe see a version of her in episode there's three. a there's an interesting thing that happens when she dies right there there the priestess says something interesting she says uh let me think i'm trying to find it the priestess says may the sleeper guide you spirit beyond the river of stars oh there was a cool name for the force too um it was the current rider yes which is you know to the tide i, I can't remember i can't remember who mentioned it but maybe it was, it was uh, a vi the violet guy violet guy. no no no. the the river of stars part the oh the guy. river stars it's like Oh, big! Oh, because of the tie to the end when she's in the coffin and how it's like a river of stars. A little bit, yeah. Could oh. be, maybe not. You pass this really cool mural, which I brightened for. Yeah, I, I didn't pleasure. catch any of this. This is cool. Um, there's a like a mural on the wall, and um, you pass it, and it, you could you could ignore it, but it is Lady Corvax's castle on a hill overlooking twin sons so this is this is the direct visual parallel to tell you you are on the right track if you think about the parallels to twin sons and ray and kylo yes. because what star wars does is it lays symbolic easter eggs so that when you go back you're like oh my god what are they saying yes. they're saying that this is the same story <laughs> again and yeah yep, yep. And then you go down a hallway, more hallways, you learn about the crystal mines and mines are really significant in Star Wars because they represent the suffering of the galaxy and the consumption and the eternal Star War. The crystals, I don't think we know officially are kyber crystals, but what other kind of crystals can power things like this? I know, this? They, those look like kyber crystals to me. So it's an entire room full of, full of crystals which use our... And there's a there's an aspect of industrialization versus um, natural world, yeah. nature, natural world in this theme, which is cool. I like it. Um, just more Star Wars. <laughs> I just I kept on just grabbing the scripts because I was like, oh, this is interesting. The Bright Star was more powerful than all the crystals combined. Lady Corvax created the Aeon engine to channel the Bright Star's energy. The destruction dis diminished and reduced our planet to a wasteland as long as an outsider mm, an outsider desires the bright star's power um mustafar will never be free okay everything in this story is symbolic uh they are saying um in if i may riff a little bit on the symbolism they're saying that padme is the most powerful star uh avatar of the force creation of the force that has ever existed yeah and that she is as long as an outsider somebody who should not possess the bright star possesses her covets her then the galaxy can never be free <sighs> hello dark union <laughs> i can't wait for it i i mean i I want to say that I'm crazy because it feels like I am, but I'm not because it's like this is this is literally a telling you the story that you want that the darkness wants to control the feminine, the outsider out of the divine pair, the divine union, the divine couple 
wants to control the power of the feminine. It's the story. That is the story. Okay, moving on. Uh, Oh, yes, this one was really cool. They kind of tell you're you're in a different elevator going up. So it's kind of telling you that you're on your way out of the the underworld, which is really interesting. Right. Um, and it's warning you what you're up against. So Lady Corvax has a, sent- a sentinel army. Um, and sorry, I just took the transcript. So it's, it's badly worded, but you don't have an army. What are you going to do? Right. And this, this is, this is a parallel to Maz having a conversation with um, Finn and Ray and kind of all these things. It's like, it's telling you that this is the danger. You know, this is, this is, this is the end conflict that we're getting to the end of times. This is, this is the, this is the climax of the entire story that we're getting to. Mm -hmm. And the bright star is the key. Right. And if wielded in the wrong way, this is the point. This is the point of trust. This is the point of the saga. If wielded in the wrong way, it will cause destruction of the galaxy. So that's important. So if Ray goes dark and used the wrong way, it'll destroy the galaxy. And if yeah, if the dark union is successful, then that's the the control of the feminine means it is off balance forever. This is the end. This is the end of the story. <laughs> Um, but if sh- it's unselfishly not controlled and shared with the galaxy again and allowed to live, then we're back to balance. What is this one? And so this is the end. So you're you're um you go through the tomb. You have another conversation with the Black Bishop, and he confesses to you that he's actually Lord Corvax stuck between between life and Which death. Which is so and sad because it makes me think Padme. Like that's I I mean I already feel like I knew that because of the Vader comics. Sure. We knew this, but this is a com- this is a confirmation, uh, which was unexpected and sad. Um, sorry. So I I liked how Lord Corvax is in this tomb. Um, I I like his armor. I think there's so many cool things. Do you like the symbol that's on the wall? Um, which is basically a a um the ling lingam yoni oh, is symbol it? together. Yes, this is this is them in union telling you what needs to happen which is the feminine and the masculine need to be working together oh yes so nothing in this is not symbolic it's actually like please turn to the right dude that's doing the walkthrough i want to be able to see that statue because like that's why it's all important um I am I'm, I'm gonna see if I can actually use an Oculus to to do the game and hope it doesn't give me headaches at some point because I really do actually want to experience this. I know. I, I feel so like my, my brother has a VR and I was like, maybe you can do it, but it's the it's apparently the wrong VR and mm. kind of sad. Anyway. Um yeah. so there's they're telling you a few things. You end up um getting the bright star. Um it doesn't look as bright as it was before. Oh, that's right. Oh, and oh it was also trapped. oh yeah, there was it was trapped under rocks and stuff like so it was buried. It was yes. dead. It was and, dead. And also, the, it, it's very important that Lord Corvax gave you something, right? What did he give you? I forget. He gives you a magical blue family lightsaber. Oh yeah, it's the legacy <laughs> lightsaber, and um, it also has a. Lots of people have pointed out that it has the um, the Caduceus or the uh, staff of uh how do you pronounce that this is particularly cardigan vixen who did a a tweet thread on how it's representationally sorry josh did a tweet thread on this and then we also see a parallel in some of the um t-shirt stuff there's a snake around a blue lightsaber for the rise of skywalker oh yes they're just smacking you over the face with the symbolism so this is this is the symbol of healing basically in mythology it is like the caduceus which is like the medical symbol of the winged snake except around it's the rod it's wrapped around it's the rod rod one yeah um right so this is telling you that this is the secret is healing the the secret right so the symbolism is saying the secret well no it's well yeah yeah it's it's the secret of healing it's also the secret it's also a power that's coming down to you in your family you have to you Mm -hmm. have to and you, you have, have to wield embrace it. that power and it will heal you. Mm-hmm. It's so cool looking too. It's like a, pr- it's like a proto it, lightsaber. I, I want it. This is the lightsaber I've always wanted. He actually wanted. just calls it a light sword. He doesn't call it a lightsaber. Yeah. It has this cool winged outside and then the, the 
curl kind of around the lightsaber itself, which I don't know. I that's that's the light sword I've always wanted. Please it's give it beautiful. to me. It, it, mm-hmm. I, I like the more fantasy looking of it. So that's where I think like speculation wise, we're going to go to the way in the past where we actually have like knights yes. and armor and cool weapons that look um, fancy and stuff. Because it, it, it opens up visually to tell more medieval-esque story and that visually will create a um which they're they're laying all the groundwork by showing us the knights of ren and kind of how they've picked up these things to say oh let's go look at them when they were new it would be so cool if there was yeah. more there were more knights like like ben mm-hmm. because like I-, I yearn for like more fantasy aesthetic in my science fiction fantasy star wars experience i, I want like knights in shiny armor and like wizards and stuff mm-hmm. so Yeah, we got a lot of that in Rebels and in the Malachor episodes, Twilight of the Apprentice. Um, You could see the one of the battles that happened and there was a lot of that. So I think that that's this, you know, like they lay groundwork way, 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 way in advance. And I think that that's part of that. We could see it, I think. Um, And then in the end. So uh, so you're uh, able to unlock the Bright Star by putting your family sword into this thing. And that's how you... That's oh yeah 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 sorry so that's that's important yes. it's like it's like ben needs to embrace his family legacy to unlock this star anyway and it's the reverse of a uh arthur moment it's putting the sword into the stone yeah. like returning returning it returning it yeah uh, un- un- letting go of that power momentarily yeah which is it's interesting momentarily to to allow yourself to to access the power of the past and then you're rewarded with the bright star with the bright star and what happens um, violet picks it up for you because you can't pick it up and you're very (laughs) mad um you're like i can't pick it up well whoever was doing the walkthrough for me was mad and then you walk out and violet's like haha i'm giving this to to vader uh (laughs) curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal (laughs) whatever yeah he was always kind of shifty i didn't trust that guy I actually was really mad the first time I watched that. I was like, dang it. <laughs> it's like, I was like actually betrayed. Like, hey. Um, so Vader runs away with it. Um, he scampers practically. He's like, woohoo, getting my wife he throws back. You away. Um, yeah, you throw, you get thrown and you meet up with the priestess at the end and you're like, what are we going to do? I, you know, can we get out of here? Like, this is terrible. And it's like, she's like, look, it's too late for this. Uh, we need to we need to go up against Fortress Vader and attack it. And and you're like, uh, we don't have an army. What army? And she's like, we have all the army we need. And points to a random mural with a sword with a a person wielding a sword, the sword you have in your hand. Mm-hmm. You are the army. What? <laughs> Oh, no. I, I didn't put that together. I thought she actually meant an army. <laughs> she just met you? Uh, I mean, this is like, you know, <laughs> I need a weapon. You have no. one. Oh, no. It's going to be you. Moment. You're gonna get yes, killed. you are the weapon. Didn't you realize all along you are the cycle, the way, the ring coming to completion? You are the, the legacy person that is going to solve the problems of this world because you are the descendant of Lady Corvax. And what's fascinating is that the sword looks like um, kind of an, a more knightly version. You got like a little cape. You got the sword, but it looks like the Last Jedi one teaser poster with Ray holding the sword being the bright version oh, of the light. Interesting. Okay. Yes. Okay. I mean, it's off to the side, right? It's facing to the right, so it's not the same time, but it's telling us that, yeah, some, this is important. That's cool. So mm-hmm. I actually only have one more thing on my, my sheet, oh. and it's to ask what do you think will happen in Chapter 3? I don't think that they're going to heal Mustafa. I know, like, there's, it's impossible because this mm. happens before Rogue One. So, so something goes Yes, wrong. so we know we know Mustafar, maybe it was a little less, um, you know, whatever. But the problem is Vader is still around, yeah. right, in Rogue One. So I do not think that they are going to be successful in the way that they think that they will. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I think they might return the Bright Star to the Mustafarians. I think that would be a good ending for yeah. it. Um, you're definitely going to go and fight up a whole bunch of people. That's why you've been training with your lightsaber every single episode, because you're going to need to use your lightsaber. I, I don't know that Vader's going to learn anything. No. Like, we've talked yeah. about that. Like, he just, uh, he this, this boy does not learn because he is dead. Right. <laughs> He's, he is symbolically dead. He doesn't he, learn. So, mm-hmm. but he also can't have the bright star because one Padme alive no. and that doesn't make sense myth- like symbolically and two it would destroy the universe and we would have heard about it so something needs to happen to keep it from him but it also can't heal Mustafar. I think it might fall into the lab no um, okay yeah what I was thinking is well like it needs to remain lost because at this point Padme is it, lost it yeah it looks like I, I get the impression it's going to be quote unquote lost or like um hidden from vader like he thinks it was destroyed or something you know but it's really just waiting and biting yeah its time. yeah i think that's that's the right symbolism to end the story it's just it's just interesting yeah, yeah I, I i really 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 curious about what it's gonna be it, it, and whether and whether or not this will like because mustafar may appear in the rise of skywalker so mm-hmm. so it would be cool if it brought it back and i i I've mentioned this because as soon as um, I was going to be recording with um, Alex and Molly from Star Wars Explained, they they were on this last episode here and just before this. So um, he asked me right away because it came out the same day. This came out the same day as we were recorded. And he was like, oh, my God, can you tell me about the symbolism? I only got into a little bit because I hadn't had a chance to watch the whole walk through the whole thing. I said, there's a lot of female symbolism. <laughs> 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 um but he was like, I, I mentioned in that because we talked about kind of weird force stuff that we could see in, in The Rise of Skywalker and how many people because of this game are speculating that we're going to have a rebirth in the galaxy of all these dead planets. And that how Mustafar coming back to life would be very sim- thematically apropos. And he said that would blow people's minds I know. if Wouldn't that it be happened. Such a because good of visual? if they saw, yeah. yeah, if they saw, you know, Vader Immortal and they saw this and they were like, oh my God, it came back to life finally. And 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 it would parallel what we saw with the celebration in the extended editions of um, Return of the Jedi with all of the different planets celebrating. Instead, we would see all of the dead. Oh, planets. and that would be the that would be the like crazy final sequence that JJ keeps yes. talking about. Yes, yes, it would yes. be really neat. I think that that's what I think that's what like what else? I just I feel it in my bones. It'd be it'd be really cool if we got that. Mm-hmm. That would be really interesting. Yeah. But I mean, I think. What do you think about this? like repetitive storytelling in general like no knowing that we have literally seen it it, this is a large even though it's only like 80 minutes long total with the two two episodes this is a large almost like microcosm of star wars it's like um okay it's it's a microcosm of star wars yeah it it, It it's really interesting it's it's also like a hero's journey like you go down into the depths Mm -hmm. of mustafar and you find some in information you didn't have before and you fight monsters and so like it's it's very star wars in that way as well and then there's all these there's all these parallels like it's the one large ring story is the tale of anakin and padme and the conclusion of that tale with his grandson and ray that's a middle ring actually because the large story is the story of the galaxy struggle overall well hmm I think um, the the wound to the galaxy will be the large ring, right? Whatever that ends the, up happening. The in wound. The, the well. Oh, oh. You mean like the old Republic wound? Okay, yeah. I, I'm just talking because it exists. But it existed. It it exists. We know it's there. They're just they haven't solved that ring. Right. I, I guess I was just talking about the the big ring of the star. The one Fine. The Skywalker about. saga is the ring. Technically. Fine. <laughs> Sorry, my brain works on so many like it it tr- it tries to do too. You're much. on a you're on a smarter level than me. Come back down to to <laughs> a galaxy brain. I'm sorry. <laughs> Literally that's what happens when a galaxy brain. I'm like, what does this mean for the galaxy? Mm. <laughs> and then me I'm like, what is this mini st- what does this little tiny ring mean for the galaxy? Oh, and then me I'm Miller. like, what does this mean for the love story? That's all I care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the love story is important because it's, it's just it's a parallel to the same thing. Yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah, I was gonna- it's just another parallel. And uh, yeah, there's a, there's going to be an episode upcoming um, where I'm actually going to do like the parallels in Rebels specifically. So we're just talking about the one parallel story, the the Vader immortal story. But there's also parallels in, in Rebels. And it's it's fascinating when you view it through that lens. And so these are just different lenses to view the story. And what is it telling us? It's telling us the same things. Um, Chelsea, what, do you, what is this telling us? I I wasn't thinking that it was going to be this transparent, but it, it's it's really hard to even escape it at all. Like it's really the same story mm-hmm. as like the larger Skywalker saga. Like if anybody has been paying attention to all of the all of the things that have come out about Darth Vader, it's really hard to ignore that this is like a retelling of Anakin's hero's journey, mm-hmm. but like in miniature inside Darth Vader's castle in his unconscious mind. It's like the same exact thing as him going inside his own like self to inside the world between worlds like it's the same it's the same story as that it's the he's trying to figure out so when you go to therapy (laughs) so when you go to therapy you talk especially Jungian and Freudian therapy you talk about dreams this is the Vader dream trying to resolve his problems the dream of a the dream of a dead man. The dream of a Can't dead man learn. who's stuck. Yeah. He's stuck. He's stuck. He's, he's, he, it is, it is telling us the story of Vader. I feel so bad for him. From a different angle. Yeah. That's. I love, I love idiot boys. Yeah. It's, it just makes me sad. Yeah. Hmm. We, we, but also it's really cool and visually so pretty and just interesting and and fascinating and if you want to dig into these layers they're there to eat and consume and and it's like an endless buffet of symbolism which is my jam yeah i, I really like it it makes me feel <laughs> it makes me feel a little bit clever <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, he, he, I picked up the puzzle pieces that they laid there in the first I'm place like, and they already knew about and that they are just giggling to themselves about. I, I, like, I'm, sure, Oops. I'm sure there's some. I'm, I'm not as clever as Star Wars, but I get to try to solve the problem of Star Wars that they create. They're like the New York Times yeah. crossword puzzle creators. And then you feel really smart when you solve their puzzle. Exactly. Like, I, I'm sure there was something <laughs> that, was that they were like, well, that's just a happy coincidence, but I'm glad that you enjoyed it. <laughs> but like, I'm sure that a lot of it is, I mean, like, it's just gotta be. Well, so, so, and I've said this before, and I do want to say this again, it is, so it is either there's two things that happen in Star Wars. Sometimes things end up being totally off the deep end because they were they they weren't really kind of thinking with the vision in mind and sometimes that you get the odd story that is like what well, what were they thinking so that happens that is the that is the occasional path that they go down there is purposeful creation of the one story right and then there is also in addition to that intuitively plugging into the one story because it feels star wars yes. I, I feel like and that happens both of those are true mm-hmm. and they end up feeding each other because sometimes they're like and and this is something that I learned when I read the concept art art of books for the force awakens and for the last jedi to visualize the world they did guided imagery which is actually a psychological um technique really? to understand what you are thinking in your subconscious that's so cool so they used a psychological tool to tell us the story to try to tap into the like collect collective unconscious a little bit yes that's really interesting and and it's what i've been wondering about is like these these artists don't know the story they can't know. well and some of it was like them working with people like kathleen kennedy and kathleen would be like i'm image i'm i'm imagining <laughs> this and then they would draw it for her right so it's like yeah. giving giving your actual subconscious a projection that you can actually look at that is that is deeply psychological it's very Jungian and it's very Campbellian so you know this whole process this whole creation has been this way this has been Vader Immortal I'm very much looking forward to episode three I think it'll be really good because based on the further two they seem to know how to tell stories and then give them like a really good punch ending especially with the vader comics they've given both vader comics a really solid punch because they understand this story structure so well chelsea would you recommend vader immortal i guess watch it on youtube (laughs) it'll only take you like 
an hour. Good. Yeah. De- depending on how how focused the guy is. <laughs> girl running around the caverns and looking at the iconography which i wish they would turn to the right for (laughs) yeah exactly yeah so uh, just you know go and watch it but if you get an opportunity to play you can actually go and probably go and stare at some of the murals which are beautiful um i highly recommend it it's good star wars it's very good star wars so chelsea where can people find you if they are looking for you out there on the internet doing massive massive tweet (laughs) bits that was 300 tweets long (laughs) Um, so I'm at North Gallus at, uh, on Twitter. Um, and, and that's basically where I am right now. I'm not really on Tumblr anymore. And, uh, occasionally we are on a riffing tweet thread where we are like, what about this? What about this? What about this? It's, it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm really loving Star Wars Twitter for being able to interact very quickly with the smart people that I know in the Star Wars fandom. And a lot of people have stuff to contribute and it is iterative and it is something that we as the hive mind are solving together. So, um, I, I can't wait to to see you and interact with you and, and have conversations. And if you have any questions about this particularly, you can reach out on Twitter or you can uh, leave a comment on YouTube. And um, both Chelsea and I will try to review those and get back to you with some answers if you have any more kind of questions on the stuff that we covered in this. And again, this was just, you know, kind of our symbolic understanding of the Vader Immortal series. So, so far, it was fun. Thank you for galaxy braiding with me. <laughs> You're welcome. so good talking with you. Thank you for listening to What the Force. I'm Marie Claire Gould, your host. Our music is the What the Force theme orchestral music by Christy Carew. We have a Patreon at patreon.com slash what the force. We like to thank all our patrons, especially those who love What the Force. Night Huntress in Wild Space, Susan, and Cassandra Corvid. We are available on iTunes, Google Play, and other podcatchers, including YouTube. If you would like to support the show in other ways, please leave a five-star review on iTunes. You can connect to us on Twitter at What the Force Show. Feel free to reach out and start a conversation. Cheers. <laughs>